Welcome to WNL Sports Weekly. I'm Jeremy Franklin. This week we'll speak with men's lacrosse coach Dean McCabe, women's basketball player Andrea Ferrero, and men's basketball player Roy McMillan. But first a quick look back at the weekend in Washington and Lee Athletics. Men's and women's swimming both won ODAC championships at the Greensboro Aquatic Center. Emily Rollo earned Swimmer of the Year honors for the women, while Allie McQueen was named Rookie of the Year and Cami Gardner was tabbed as the league's top coach. Tommy Thetford was selected as the Scholar Athlete of the Year for men's swimming. Wrestling secured its best ever finish at the Centennial Conference Championship, claiming three runner-up spots to place fourth overall at the league meet in Hoboken. In track and field, Max Strayler broke the men's program record in the 5,000 meters in a meet at Boston University, while the women's 4x400 relay team won at Roanoke's Finn Pincus Invitational. Women's basketball downed Holland 60-55, and men's hoops defeated Roanoke 97-83. Baseball opened the season by splitting a doubleheader at Averett, losing Game 1 8-5, but winning the nightcap 6-3. And men's lacrosse kicked off the year with a 12-11 loss to 7th-ranked York at Wilson Field. With me now is men's lacrosse coach Gene McCabe. Gene, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back, Jeremy. You had a nail-biter against the Spartans on Saturday, a rematch of an NCAA tournament game from last year. What kind of positives do you pull out of the season-opening performance? Well, obviously you want the win, and we were disappointed. Uh, I think we uh, left some things at the, on the table at the end, and, uh, but so many positives. You know, we, that was the team we lost to, as you mentioned, in the NCAA tournament, 12-5. The comeback uh, after a lot of hard work in the offseason, and, uh, and have that opportunity to play them again in the opening game of the season at home and to have a chance to win it. I think it gave us a lot of confidence that we can play at that high level uh, this year um, and uh, really show that you know, the things that we've been working on so hard in the off season uh, are, are right there. Some minor improvements for sure, and we're always striving to get better, but uh, I was really pleased overall, and I think it, the, the guys come away with it with a with a, with a sense of who we are at this stage. The Generals had to replace a big senior class from last year's ODAC championship team, including three All-Americans. How are some of your younger players responding as they look to step into those roles? Well, there always is that transition where, you know, you, you, you graduate a tre tremendous senior class like that from a leadership standpoint, you know, let alone the, uh, the, the performances on the field. Um, those guys just had a sense that we were going to get this done, and I think but they left a good roadmap. I've been really pleased with how our six seniors now are leading this team, uh, very similarly uh, with their own personalities. Uh, but also, you know, you know, a third of our team is juniors and seniors. We only have 14 total juniors and seniors. But the leadership we're getting from that, that older group, um, I couldn't be more pleased. The ODAC preseason coaches poll was as close as possible. Roanoke was picked first, but just one point and one first place vote ahead of uh, WNL. League play is still a few weeks away, but what are your expectations for the conference in 2017? It'll be as tight and competitive as it always is. Um, and the whole league is getting better. Um, and, and so it'll be exciting. I think we're sort of in a one game at a time mentality, but we also think that each one of these games that we have, you know, this, this tough out of conference schedule that we have prepares us for what will be you know, another knockdown drag out in the ODAC for sure. Wednesday's game against Christopher Newport will be the first annual Virginia Lacrosse the Nations Cup. Tell us more about the Lacrosse the Nations program and the general's involvement with that cause. Well, we're very proud of our partnership with Lacrosse the Nations. I think it's a tremendous organization uh, that improves the lives of uh, you know, boys and girls globally and locally. And uh, to have our student athletes be part of that, I think uh, 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 really embraces our mission in our program to improve the lives of those in our community. So it's really uh, been great, you know, the, the trip that we, we took in August and, and uh, the trip we're planning again this coming August. And, and this Lacrosse the Nation's Virginia Cup, first annual uh, game between CMU and Washington and Lee, um, helps raise awareness for that and, and, and hopefully some funds and, and really honors our brothers and sisters in the Lacrosse the Nation's program. So uh, Coach Thompson has been involved with um, Lacrosse the Nations for a long time at, C at CNU and so it really made sense. We're both on the executive boards. So it was really a, a neat opportunity to come together and, and have the game of lacrosse uh, mean something, you know, uh, far greater than just the game we're playing on Wednesday night. Gene, thanks for joining us. Best of luck throughout the season. Thank you, Jeremy. It's always great to be here. Here with me now is Andrea Ferrero, junior basketball player from Ridgefield, Connecticut. Andrea, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. 
After a rough patch in January, WNL has won three of its last four, even with a lineup that's still depleted by injury. How are the Generals finding ways to pull out victories? Yeah, so in our last couple of games, we've definitely been focus on, focusing on defensive intensity and team execution, and I think those two keys have been really important for us in order to get our last uh, couple wins. Your final two regular season games come against two of the top four teams in the conference, Guilford and Emory and Henry. How beneficial is it to play that level of competition right before the ODAC tournament? Yeah, so everyone comes into the ODAC tournament ready to play ball, and so I think playing two of the top four teams in our last week of conference will definitely get us ready for the playoffs. And there's also the potential that we see these teams again next week, and so it'll be important to learn from the games this week and see how we can improve going into next week. Saturday's game against Guilford will be the final regular season home game for your three seniors, Jackie Clifford and Darby and Sydney Lundquist. What have those players meant to the program? They mean so much to our program. They're three of the hardest workers I've ever met. Um, always coming in early to shoot, doing off-season lifts, and they're always just looking to improve their game and also to push others to be the best that they can. So it's safe to say all three are going to be very missed next year. What are the general's expectations for next week's ODAC tournament? Uh, we're expecting to come into the tournament really strong. We've shown that when we play together, when we play hard, we can run with anyone. And so I think going into the tournament, we have a clean slate, and we're looking to make some noise and make a run and do really well. So we're really excited about it. Andrea, thanks for joining us. Best of luck the rest of the year. Thank you so much. Joining me now is Roy McMillan, sophomore basketball player from Raleigh. Roy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. WNL put together one of its best performances of the season on Saturday as you beat Roanoke 97-83. What led to such a good showing against the Maroons? Yeah, it was a great win. Um, it was a real team effort. We played fast and aggressive, scored 97 points as a team, um, and we had four starters and double figures. So we went into the halftime break, I think down one, but we came out just real fast, real aggressive, and took care of the ball second half, and we just played hard the whole 40 minutes. In that contest, you made your first start since November, and you responded with a season-high 18 points. Have you been looking for your offense a little bit more over the last few games? Uh, I wouldn't say so, but definitely just taking the open shots you see, trying to be aggressive but not forcing anything. And then luckily, I've been hitting my shots. So. WNL closes out the regular season uh, with games against Randolph and Hampton Sydney. Both of those teams came from behind to beat the Generals earlier in the season. What are your expectations for the two rematches? Uh, every game in the ODAC that we play is tough, and these two games will be no different. So we expect just, you know, tough teams. Um, they're going to be confident coming in against us after they beat us earlier in the season. So we just got to be ready and stick to our game plan. What needs to happen for WNL to make a run in the ODAC tournament next week? Hopefully we will get a win against Randolph um, and then at home against Hampton Sydney on Saturday. And that will give us three straight wins and then we would have a home game in the first round of the ODAC tournament. So that would be big and then that would just give us more confidence to keep pushing through. Roy, thanks for joining us. Best of luck with the rest of the year. Thank you for having me. It's time now for a look at the upcoming weekend. Women's tennis will open up the season with home ODAC matches against Bridgewater and Roanoke. Women's lacrosse also begins regular season play with a trip to longtime rival Mary Washington. Baseball heads to Atlanta for a three-game series at Emory, which starts on Saturday afternoon. Men's and women's track and field will compete at the UCS Invitational in Winston-Salem. Basketball wraps up the regular season at home. Women's hoops takes on Guilford, and the men's team will face hampton Sydney. Baseball plays a Sunday doubleheader at Emory, and men's lacrosse travels to 10th-ranked Denison. For WNL Sports Weekly, I'm Jeremy Franklin. Thanks for watching.